Hi, I'm Aaron Miller, CTO of Book Lutton, and um, today I want to introduce you to the Book Lutton Converter. It converts HTML archives into EPUB documents, which can be read on ebook devices. The converter is easy to get to. You can get to it in the footer of the site from any page of the site. Click on EPUB Converter, and the page you'll see is very simple. It's a simple form and what it expects is a zip file of HTML documents. The easiest way to create that file is to start with our example. Download that, unzip it. Um, you can use standard web design tools to edit and preview that. Start with it as a template um, and use the browser to preview or use the preview window in an authoring tool like Dreamweaver. And there are a few requirements, but uh, they're all contained in the index.html file. That file is required, and if you look inside of it, it's a standard HTML file, but it does contain some additional metadata in the head, which uh, applies specifically to EPUBs. And the required fields are language title, creator, and also identifier. Although if you would like the system to generate an identifier for you, that is the default behavior. If you have your own primary identifier, you can uncomment this line here and specify it there. Other identifiers are optional, such as ISBN or URN scheme. So if you're familiar with HTML, specifying these values is fairly straightforward. Uh, they follow Dublin Core, which is what this prefix stands for. <clears throat> Many people in digital publishing will be familiar with that. Um, there are certain extensions that will be interpreted like uh, the .aut extension for the creator field. That will indicate that that's the author of the publication. Um, a dot .art extension would indicate a certain type of contributor in the same way. Date, description, publisher, coverage are all fields you can use. Those are, are optional. And of course you can include style sheets and images in your archive too. Uh, a typical structure might look like this. This is a Gutenberg file that we've unzipped and we've added our index.html file to it. And what we did with this file is take the links from the table of contents and put them into a format that the converter will understand. You can see that in the body of the index HTML document. It's a simple ordered list. Uh, each list item that it contains has a link, which links to a file in the structure or a fragment of, that, of one of those files text of that link will become the label in the table of contents in your EPUB and of course it will link to whatever you specify in the href attribute. This example shows you a nested structure. Uh, it's not necessary to nest things though it's possible. In a nested structure you'll have an unordered list inside of a list item. In a flat structure you'll have something more like this where you have an ordered list with a list of list items, each one containing a link, and none of them containing another ordered list. So let's uh, look at the output from, from uploading this example here. And the idea of the converter is that by giving you some feedback along the way, um, you can guarantee that your resulting EPUB is valid. And a valid EPUB is important because most reading systems will not display invalid EPUBs. Now, the standard is fairly strict in that sense. Uh, and so there are a few small validation errors that may be tolerated, but in general, you want to make sure your EPUB is valid, especially in this case where you're going to be paying for it. So the converter can take a little time if there are a lot of files, as in this one there's over 100 image files, and it has to go through uh, and process each file. Take a little while.
But when it's finished, you'll get a report. And this is step two, where you can look through the report, see the feedback from the conversion process. And then you can go back and start over to correct any errors. Or you can get an actual validation of the resulting EPUB output. And let me explain the difference between those two kinds of reports. The first report is called the pre-flight report. It's what you see in the top section of this page. And it's where you'll see critical errors listed in red, if you have errors. Uh, it's important to take care of those because those are probably going to cause the resulting EPUB to be malformed. Um, in this case, it's saying it can't parse certain content files. That's going to be a problem uh, because those files probably won't display in your resulting EPUB when it's rendered in a reading system. So we can also see warnings, which we can ignore. But they're, uh, for example, in this case, they're letting us know that this file was skipped because it's a it's a hidden metadata file, so it's not included in the EPUB. The important thing to look for here is an informational line saying that it found the index file and that it grabbed the correct metadata from it, the intended metadata. The other important thing is uh, the list of lines that begin with NCX. Those are indicating that it grabbed all of the links for your table of contents. So everything's OK here except the content documents. And we'll have another video that you should check out for um, getting HTML sources to parse correctly. Um, it's a more advanced usage of the tool. For now, let's just show you what we would do um, after we'd made those corrections. We'd go to start over, and we would browse to our corrected file. And we'd hit step two to generate another report. And you can repeat this process as much as you need to. Uh, it can be quite involved, or it can be quite easy, depending on what your sources are. But the important thing is that you can get very detailed feedback along the way so that your end result is going to be valid. And in this case, we see a pre-flight report with no red lines. That's exactly what we want. We see that it found the index file. We see that it grabbed the correct metadata for it, and that it added all of our table of contents items. All the images are there. There appear to be no errors. In this case, we've got a good pre-flight report. And just to make sure that we're going to get a valid EPUB before we actually pay the $5 to download it, we're going to click on Validate. And now we'll use a tool called EPUB Check. Uh, released by Adobe, which is open source, um, and it, it's sort of the official validation tool. You can see the output of that tool here. Uh, that can be very detailed if you have problems, and those can, those, seeing those can also help you decipher what to do. Uh, we have some links to informational sites about that. This indicates that the, the EPUB is valid, which means it will probably be able to be read and displayed by most reading systems out there. Uh, so at that point, we'll go ahead and click download. And that will take us to the form confirming that we are buying this file for $5. There's minimal details, which we don't store and we transmit securely. Uh, if you fill those out, you'll have your payment processed, and you'll be on a page that allows you to download the file. So we hope that this is useful for publishers of all sizes and for readers and web designers and uh, of course we're happy to help with problems or questions just contact Aaron or Travis uh, 